Welcome. I'm so excited to finally launch a course that I am just so um, passionate about, I guess. I've been really wanting to do something like this and just did not know what a what to do. And so I'm so excited um, to be launching this course and be able to share this with you today. And it's all about being a social media manager and how those steps and how to really um, learn social media and the ins and outs of how to actually do social media, but also how to run a social media business, um, a side gig, a freelancing, whatever you want to call it. So welcome to the masterclass on learning how to work from home to be a social media manager. Uh, my name is Kristen Meeks. I own a digital marketing company that I've had for 13 years, but I'm not new to social media in that almost 20 years ago, which once I did the math, I realized there's just no way um, I could be doing something that was 20 years ago. There's just, I'm not, I can't be that old yet. I'm still, you know, too young to say that, but I guess not anymore. Um, but 20 years ago in higher education, I attended a conference up at High State University. It's called KIPP Camp. I'm not sure. I always say I'm going to go look it up and see if it's still around. But I attended this awesome experience up there where it was really for journalists and how educators and higher education folks can learn to work with journalists, um, how to just, you know, get get your PR and things like that in front of the right people. But they talked about the power of social media in the future and how using um, programs like Facebook and Twitter and um, LinkedIn, I think at the time, and imagine it was completely different than what it looks like right now. But they were talking about just that interaction there that was so exciting that we came back um, and, um, jumped on board. There was three of us that went and each of us took a social media and we just went full steam ahead. Of course, um, the college we worked at wanted IT to do it and not the marketing department. But once we got through that, um, we really had a great time launching that and immediately saw results. Saw results of social media um, from people that um, there was a guy that was getting ready to retire in the next couple of years that was working in student services. And he was like, okay, yeah, sure. I'll try Facebook. And he put out on Facebook, hey, come register for classes. It's open now. Um, and then he would tell people when he was talking to him, hey, follow me on Facebook. And I'm going to announce when the, I'm going to announce when registration opens first on Facebook. And he was doing all of this. They were still doing their traditional marketing. So um, this one time, probably right after we talked to him about it, he did this on Facebook. And then he sent out the letters like two weeks later saying it was time. And by the time the letters went out, he said he was already booked out a month and a half. He actually came to me and told me the success story. Um, I mean, he didn't say you were right and I was wrong, but he did say, hey, this does work. And um, that's when I realized the power of social media and the buy-in that if I could get somebody um, like him to buy into social media, that we were going to see as a college real results. And so I took that knowledge and started helping businesses and nonprofits and eventually launched my um, own business and worked for myself at 29. I started my own business. And so you can do the math, um, mm -hmm. how old I am now. Um, and um, have not looked back since, have not been um, unemployed per se, have not made um, less than what I ever made in higher education ever again, and just have really seen, um, especially in the last couple years, um, the increase in the demand of social media managers. And so as a social media manager myself, um, I do trainings like this one. I do trainings with um, associations, like I have a contract with the Small Business Development Center um, currently and I have for the last few years and do trainings for them, get paid. People always ask, get paid to do trainings for them. And then in turn, some of those folks that go to the trainings, which maybe some of you, I'm, I'm seeing some um, is everyone able to hear me? Somebody just messaged and said they can't hear me. 
Okay, I'm not sure what's going on in the rain. I will record this. So um, thank you. Thank you for the feedback. I will record this. So if you can't hear me right now, Lorraine, hopefully the recording you will. Thanks for letting me know. Um, so as a social media manager myself, like I said, I do trainings, I do consulting. So sometimes people just are like, hey, I came up with this idea or I think this might work, but I've never tried it before. So can you help me? Because I know that you've probably have done something similar. And that's what's really great is that I have done stuff similar. And so I could say, you know what, we've tried this before in this industry and this is the steps we took. And then it was more successful or we tried three different things and we realized this one works. So that's what you're kind of paying for with a consult. Um, oh, good. She's all good now. I'm back. And I have clients from coast to coast because it doesn't matter. Even pre-COVID, um, it did not matter. I um, Sometimes in the ebbs and flow of business, I have more clients that I've never met um, face-to-face um, than I do that are right here in my backyard. Um, so what I do for them is sometimes I manage, just manage their social media pages, which means I post, you know, depending on their industry, I post two to three three, five times a week. We may just do one social media platform. We may do three or four or five. Um, because I have a degree in integrated marketing communications, um, I do um, have the ability to do other marketing. And so I will use some of that as well. Um, but what I do is I'm really strategic. And I think that's what sets me apart is I'm able to um, help people think that way. And in fact, that it'll be a strategy that will help them reach their overall goals. And that's where I think I can help you all um, set yourself apart from other social media managers that may just not be as strategic about the reasoning behind what they're doing. So I'm excited to show you how to do this. Um, and do it from your phone. I, I was laughing the other day and saying, I can do almost like 99% of my job all day long from my, from my cell phone, which is scary and also really cool at the same time. Um, but I feel for people that have worked from home in the past and did not have that ability um, because I feel like um, that really is a game changer. Um, the fact that, you know, I've been able to respond to clients while sitting and getting my hair done. I've been able to work on vacation without ever having to put a, a vacation email out, which I don't always recommend all the things I do. Um, I definitely think you should go on vacation and, and put that vacation email out, but I'm able to do all of that and run a business and have been able to do that for the last 13 years. Just so some things, um, if you know me personally, I have um, been very blessed to win some awards um, with my local Chamber of Commerce Entrepreneur of the Year. And then at the state level, um, prior to being 40, so several years ago, um, I was named uh, 40 under 40 in 2015. So it's not. Oh gosh, it has been a long time. <laughs> has been longer than I thought. I just did the quick math there. And I'm happy that I'm able to provide for my family um, and you know, make that six-figure income that I have strived for and able to um, you know, do things like um, we just put a patio on our house and be able to have um, things for my daughter um, in terms of dance classes and things like that. So I hate that kind of stuff and, and it's not bragging, but it's, it's tough for me to even say that kind of stuff. So, but I know that's important to um, a lot of people to have that financial freedom and I, and I strive for that personally. So I'm happy to be able to share this with you guys on how to do that. So a lot of times people say, well, what does a social media manager do? We, and, and really, am I one or am I not? Or do I even want to be one? And so that is that person who develops that strategy. Um, they might say, okay, here's where, you know, your client might say, here's what I want to do. I want to sell X more products. And so, okay, how are we going to get there? So you're able to be very strategic and thinking like how, um, I was like, solve a solution, you know, solve a problem, you know, try to get there. Also, if you're a real visual person, I love um, those folks that can just sit down and I can tell them something and they can create this awesome visual so they can do a gr awesome graphic for social media. So some of us in this world are um, my graphics folks that just love graphics and they may struggle a little bit with the strategy. Um, you know, writing may not be their strong point, but graphics are. And I feel like that's what's really cool about being a social media manager is that you can have strengths and weaknesses. And because your strengths are so strong, you can kind of bring those other things up that in other industries, it would be a, would be a bad weakness to have. But for us, it's just what we're really good at. And that's what we sell. So I feel like I'm really strategic 
and um, I know exactly what I need to write in terms of co content marketing, but my visuals definitely could could use some upgrading. So personally, myself, I've I outsource once I get to a point where I could do that. I outsource some graphics and other times I just create them. Um, what's really nice and I'll get to this is there's an awesome program out there that I bet most of you have heard of before um, that will help you look kind of like a graphic designer. Just had some conversations um, today about some people talking about possibly uh, this program, Canva is what it is, um, taking some graphic designers out, um, will not take any of them out of my life because it still does not make me um, look as good as some of my graphic design friends do. Um, what other what other things that social media managers do? They publish content. So it means they schedule content, they write content. And that's what we're talking about, that call to action, like what you want people to do and say and, and what they're what they're putting out on social media. They um, maintain contact with followers, which means lots of different things. Like they comment back, they message, um, they build that relationship online for the business. Um, and then they track insights. So what's really cool about these business accounts on social media is they have built in insights that will just make you look better. Um, never a day um, goes by that when I start with a client that I don't take them higher somewhere. Because most of the clients you're going to start with have either totally given up on their social media, are not using it at all, um, are doing it, but not consistent. And the minute you start putting consistent content out there, that's different and fresh and new, and you use some of the other tips and tools that I'm going to be teaching in this course, um, what happens is what I like to call low line fruit. So you do all these things that are like second nature to most of us. And I'll teach you in this course, if they're not, you know, this one, two, three step, and you do it and all of a sudden those numbers increase and then you look amazing because you did some just small changes and tweaks to this business account that that person that client of yours is going to go wow that's amazing like this is definitely working more people are seeing our products we're seeing more hits on our website and a lot of that little stuff can happen overnight and that's what i love about social is that we can track it um, I love billboards and all other kinds of social, all other kinds of marketing because I work with those folks all the time. But it's really hard to track a billboard. Like it's hard for me to say, "Hey, pay eight hundred dollars for this billboard for a month." We have no idea if it's tracked or not. I mean, one of my clients wanted to put a QR code on a billboard, and I'm like, "That does not sound like a good idea." <laughs> and we were talking. I was telling the story um, in a restaurant, and a cop came up to order and I'm like, we are not, I'm definitely just not saying that because there is a, a, a deputy sheriff, I think it was standing right here. I really don't think we should be taking our phones out and trying to use a QR code on the, on a billboard, which I think is a great, you know, it's great thought because we can track it, but it's really hard to track other types of marketing. But with social, most of our business accounts have that insights built in. So we can turn around, download the last month, the last week, the last year, and really show how we've increased. So you might say, oh my gosh, that sounds like a lot. I don't know. Maybe I'm out. Maybe I'm already bouncing. Um, yes, Brittany, it, is, it was Canva. You're right. Um, you know, I'm bouncing out of here already because that sounds really complicated. But let me break it down for you. It really comes down to four things. As a social media manager, you're going to come up with content ideas for the week. I um, have some great tools that I use that I'm going to share with you. There's some great um, websites out there um, that help. Um, I think once you do a couple couple weeks, it's going to start going really quick. And those ideas don't have to be um, multi-level campaigns. They just have to be a way to get in front of their audience, stay relevant, maybe give some tips, show that they're the expert in their field, help them brag a little bit. Um, that's why uh, sometimes I have to hire folks. I hired an email marketing gal to help me. I'm starting with her tonight. I have a, um, a pretty much a so social media manager that does my stuff because it helps me because it's hard for me to brag on myself and brag about what I'm doing essentially, which I, I know it's not really bragging, but it, talking about myself, um, which you know me personally, everyone's like, I don't think you have a problem talking and I don't, but sometimes it is uncomfortable and I don't know what to say. Help that client do that because you're an outsider. You can say, you know what? You're doing awesome things. Like I very rarely meet somebody that's not doing something pretty amazing. Um, if they're starting a business or they're working with a nonprofit, they're doing some really cool things. And sometimes you just have to help them. And so those ideas can be um, hidden to them. 
but really be in plain sight to you as an outsider looking in and saying, wow, this organization is really doing amazing things. The second thing, create some images. Use Canva. If you're not familiar, it's canva.com. Go check it out. You can have a free, um, I don't even think it's a trial. You can just have a free membership to it. Um, there are, of course, is paid memberships and all of that. But you can go check out the free version and just see how easy it is. And it also is a really great place to find that content, too, because if it's like, what's Thursday, like Cinco de Mayo, if it's Cinco de Mayo, guess what? They're going to have graphics already set up that you can go in and just customize a little bit, um, maybe change some colors download that and, and effortlessly schedule it out. Um, and that's the next thing. You're going to schedule the content. One of the biggest things is when I consult with somebody, I'll say, okay, we have this, all this planned out. We use this awesome content calendar that I'm going to share my template with you guys in the class. And we're going to do all this great stuff. And then I hand it over to them. And the breakdown usually is it doesn't get scheduled out. They don't have time. They don't have a person. Their person was supposed to and was sick. So take that away from them and say, let me schedule. Okay, we've come up with this. Let me schedule it for you. And so we can sit down and schedule. Like a lot of times um, I'll have stuff scheduled months ahead of time, depending on how that content comes. But even if you just sat down once a week for like maybe an hour, you could schedule uh, maybe one client, two clients, three clients and get them completely done for a week. And then essentially you just walk away, set up some notifications on your phone, wait for comments to come in, maybe go in and share some things, um, you know, maybe encourage the business or the nonprofit board to share and, and comment on something and um, just let it work its magic. And, um, you know, I think especially a program like Facebook, we have actually seen some increase. I think this is a great, I was like, I did not plan this. It was a great time to kind of launch this because we have seen some increase in um, reach and impressions over on Facebook, where in the past couple of years, it's been a little bit declining. We've seen that. Um, and I could, you know, probably talk two hours on why I think that's the case, but um, that is happening. So that's exciting. Um, and then the last thing that usually you're responsible with, with as a social media manager is replying to comments and messages. So that's where I always say marketing um, meets customer service. It's a little gray area because you want people to have um, a really good um, customer experience on your social media page, even if they're not a customer yet, because that will impact if they walk into your store, if they buy your products. So we want to make sure that comments and messages are, are dealt with. And I just started with a client a couple months ago and I said, hey, we should do this. And they could just message the page and tell us if they want that and we could deliver it or whatever it was. And the one response back, and this was to a board was like, yeah, as long as we check the messages. And I'm like, well, let me check the messages. And I've done this, like screenshot the message. You don't have to be the subject matter expert. Like that's not my expertise, but I screenshot the message and I send it to someone that is the expert. And they tell me essentially what to write or they get back to that person. And um, that's another that customer service thing. Anytime um, we talk about social media. Um, when I'm talking about clients, well, what do you do if somebody's really upset on social media? And this is probably my best tip of the entire day. So listen up. Um, if people are upset on social media, you want to get them off of social media. And I'm not saying by banning them or deleting their comment, you want to say, hey, we're really sorry that this happened. Message us a good way to to contact you. And we'll make sure somebody gets back to you. One, nine times out of 10, no one's going to message you an email or a phone number because they really don't want a solution. They just want to complain. Um, two, they might. They might say, yes, thank you. Please, here's my phone number. Then you make sure that person is taken care of. What typically happens is if they're happy, they'll comment underneath their comment, especially if other people are commenting and starting a little stir. This says, hey, they took care of the issue. I'm going to delete this message or they'll just go in and delete it. Um, you know, or they'll just never hear back from them. And so um, that's kind of that um, way of getting people off of social media that we as social media managers can really help that brand um, stay, you know, looking in the, in the, in their best light on social media. So the real question is, 
have I scared you off? <laughs> do you still want to be a social media manager? Um, but I do think, I think everybody has what it takes, honestly, um, because really you can work from anywhere. Most of us have a pretty good mobile device. I'm telling you, um, well, first off, when we started social media, there was no app or <laughs> you weren't doing it on your phone. You definitely, I mean, I remember, um, on the desktop, I remember being blocked from the college, being able to go to Facebook and having to talk to IT and say, hey, let us on social media because we're trying to use it as marketing. Um, so there was no mobile. And so now that we have these mobile devices, most of our phones, like the cameras, um, the technology is 10 times better than it's probably ever been right now. But you don't have to, you know, obviously you don't have to have that. I put tablet too, because some folks, um, it is small. I mean, it's for me, it's small as well, even though the phones have increased in size. So tablets sometimes are a better option if you're on the go, but you can also use a laptop or desktop. Um, they are great for like Canva and some of the other scheduling programs I use just because you're typing, you know, it, it's faster. I mean, I can't type a sentence on my phone without at least like five typos. So that way, you know, you can use it a little bit, but you don't have to have that kind of technology. Really, if you have one or the other, you're going to be fine. I think you're going to like the mobile device or have your stuff connected to your phone better. So that way you can take care of some of those things that pop up um, as you're out and about living your life. And what's really great is a lot of these programs I use um, either are free, have a free version that I totally back up, um, or very inexpensive um, monthly to use, and I see my return on that investment. Um, you know, I've like I mentioned, I've got back to clients on getting my hair done. Um, in the summer, I get a lot of grief for working at the pool. Um, you know, a lot of people don't understand it; they don't get that I can be at the pool on a Wednesday afternoon with my daughter and I'm still working or um, things are still going. Um, so I teach all those tips and tricks as well. Um, one of my favorite tricks is I um, schedule emails to go out um, at different times. I work a lot faster than probably most people is what I've realized. And sometimes I'll just bust through something and I'm like, I don't want people to think I'm that quick. I, that backfired on me one time. I used to be really quick on emailing back people. And um, I didn't email back this client one day. And it was like, they emailed at like 8 a.m. By 2 p.m. He's emailing me going, what, are you on vacation or something? You haven't got back to me. And I remember being like a little frustrated that he said that, but I thought, no, I did that to myself. I set the expectation that I was going to email back quickly. I'm not doing that anymore. So I schedule emails. So sometimes if you see me at the pool and then you get an email from me, um, I may not have sent it from the pool. I may have sent it, you know, at 6 a.m. that morning while I'm, I'm working, while my daughter is still getting up for the day and all of that before we go to the pool. I'm just, you can tell I'm just a little excited for pool season. It's pool month, so I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Um, I think too, is that you can work in really small increments and get some big stuff done. So I personally um, don't want to sit for eight hours a day. I did that during COVID and I ended up myself a huge chiropractor bill and having to go three times a week because I completely screwed up my hips. So I don't want to sit for eight hours a day, all day long, every day. And so I do better physically by doing small increments of work. And so I feel like um, I can teach you how to just do little things here and there that will pile up to big things and get big results. So the real reason is the real reason thing comes to mind is that you want you need to be willing to learn. Like I'm a lifelong learner. And I think that's really to my advantage because I do hesitate sometimes. I do, I'm just like everyone else. I'm like, oh, I don't want to learn that. Especially when it comes to TikTok, I'm like, ah, oh, I know I need to. I know I, you know, I know, I know, I know, but I don't want to. But if you are willing to, you know kind of get outside your comfort zone of, of maybe some platforms and just learn some, that is really, you know, half the battle. The fact that you are probably on social media, because that's probably where you heard about this, because I'm that an email. Um, I didn't know, I didn't do TV ads or radio, so you did not hear me there. Um, you know, there's easy tools that are very easy to use for people that do not have marketing degrees, don't have graphic degrees, do not have any degree even. Um, and I won't tell you what I said to some people that asked me if they needed a degree to get into marketing. Um, but the answer was 
probably not as long as you, you know, get it. As long as you're willing to learn, um, you're willing to do the reading, you're willing to um, continuously learn because things continuously change, which I think is exciting. Some people probably don't, but I think is exciting. So what can you expect to learn in this course? Well, first off, it is a six module course. Um, I think you could probably sit down and binge it in one day and be done. You could take it a little bit of time every week and be done in six weeks. I mean, you could take as long or as short as you want there. You know, once you buy the course, once you have the course, it's yours. Um, there's going to be updates and I'm going to be doing that in a Facebook group. So I'm going to be sending out email also, or excuse me, sending out um new updates to the recordings, new trainings, but then I'm also going to be sending it via email. So I'll have your email address. So if you're not on Facebook, don't worry about that. Or you're afraid you're going to miss something. You will get emails from me anytime something updates. So it's kind of a continuous thing, just like social media is continuous. This course is kind of going to be continuous even after you um, meet the six modules. So the first thing is you're going to learn how to set up social media platforms. And you might say, well, yeah, I've started a, a page before, but it seems like every time I go in there, there's something new or something they admitted. Somebody just told me the other day, we were talking about how Facebook had started integrating email. It is no longer there. We did a training less than a month ago and it was there and I recorded it and she was watching the recording and she went there and she could not find it. Um, also, they just got rid of podcasts, which have just been around since June. So there's always changing things. So we're going to talk about how to set that up, kind of what schedule you need to get yourself on to make sure that all your client stuff is up to up to speed. Um, if you're looking for something specific, where to find that information, how to organize it, um, in terms of helping them communicate and market better. Um, we're going to talk about um, how to be how to look like a graphic designer without being one. Um, I, I always, I laugh at that just because, uh, my graphic designer friends, I will never be you, but I'm, I'm, I'm about as close as I can be. And people, um, probably couldn't tell the difference from a lot of the stuff we put out. And that's what, what's what's great about social media. It's so quick that if it's not, per, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but it does have to resonate and it does have to be consistent. It does have to be, um, branded. And if we can do that, then we're going to look just as good as, as somebody using a graphic designer. The big one is, how are you going to find clients and how are you going to keep them? So I'm going to tell you all my tips and tricks of finding clients over the last 13 years um, and then how to keep them and how to um, make sure they're happy, how to keep that communication, just some things that I do that really have, um, I feel, um, aided in my success of in the social media world. And then my favorite part, getting paid, right? We, we all want to be paid for what we do. So we're going to talk about how to invoice and how to set proposals and how to use automation um, to get paid. So, you know, every day or so there's an invoice, a reoccurring invoice that goes out from a program that I use um, that um, helps me continuously get paid. And that's just a part of the puzzle that I don't have to worry about once it's set up. And I think that is key too. And setting your prices. Yes. And I should have put that on here. Um, I do talk about setting prices. Um, I think that's an important piece of the puzzle and something that um, will affect all of us. We want to make sure everybody knows their worth and that they're charging what they're actually worth. It helps the industry um, in general. So yes, I have a whole section on um, setting prices and what I do and, and how I kind of, you know, do that um, and how I've made a price list and, and those kinds of things. I talk, I'll talk all about that in the, in the longer course. And the big thing is what I think is going to be different than just taking a class on social media management is that um, you're going to have support. Um, first off, there's a hundreds of free items out there that we can use. And we're going to talk about the ones that I've weeded out um, as the best ones out there. But of course, um, we're going to grow a community. So we're going to be sharing best practices with each other. So I think that's the key here is that um, I have felt in my in my 13 years, and especially in the last couple of years, there is so much need in our communities, um, across the United States, across in the world. I really feel like it's not, um, you know, I'll, what's funny is a lot of times when I travel, I will look at people's, obviously their, their website and their social media sites. And I think, oh my gosh, this really amazing tourism destination 
and think of how much money they're leaving on the table. So it does not matter if you're in rural West Virginia or you're in, you know, some, some urban area, um, there are, um, you know, opportunities. And by creating this community and doing the best practices, there is a more than enough work to go around for hundreds of social media managers. And, and once I realized that, I thought, you know, that's what I need to do because I'm turning too many people away. I, I'm, if I'm, if I have too many, I'm not doing a good enough job. And so by helping train um, new folks and, and supporting them along the way, it's going to make our whole industry better. Um, you can find content. You might say, oh my gosh, I have no idea where to start with content. One of my favorite ones to start at in the very basic when I'm doing these one-on-one -on -one trainings with social media managers is I'm like, go to nationaldaycalendar.com. Um, and just start perusing. Cause I feel like that will help you get, even if you don't see one that's for your business or your client's business, that will get your um, you know, juices flowing up there and your creativity flowing a little bit. Definitely start small. You know, um, one of the pieces of advice I give in the class is, okay, if you have a zero portfolio, which some of you might, you may have not done any social media. You might just say, you know what? I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest of my life, but I think this might be it start small, start offering um, to review somebody's social media for them or volunteer. It's one of the things I tell people to do, volunteer with your favorite nonprofit. I work with so many nonprofits and their biggest need is marketing. And so if you can go in and say, hey, can I write 30 days of content for you? You can schedule or you can let me schedule it, whatever, or let me, let me do 30 days of graphics for you. Only thing is, I mean, it's free for you, but I want to put it in my portfolio. Is that okay? And get that out there. And then you've started to be able to, when you're talking to clients, hey, I did this for, you know, the main society, and this is what it resulted in. Um, you know, you're, even if you don't have, um, you know, that kind of connection to see the results, um, maybe the insights, maybe they haven't given you that, you can see it on social. And you're right, Tanya, nonprofits are always struggling to do social media. They are um, very thin on, on their um, employees. And um, it goes on the back burner because they're, they're so busy doing the important work that needs to be done in the nonprofit world. One thing that I offer, and so many people do not take advantage of it, it was kind of funny. I offered it to a group and the guy goes, I don't want you to be overwhelmed by offering this if a lot of people say yes to it. And I said, oh, people don't say yes to it, unfortunately. So you'll get the people that are really serious. So I offer a free review. It's on my website right now. It's in every chamber packet in a 50 mile radius of any new chamber member. And I might get about one a month, which most of the time I would say every other month that results in a client. So from just offering that free review, um, I actually call it a review, not a um, audit. An audit is something I have people pay for, but I offered a review and what it is, I literally pull up their social media pages or even ask them, hey, what do you want me to review? And yes, I did that, Tanya, for your nonprofit. And I said, what do you want me to review? And they'll say, I'll review my Facebook page. And I'll pull out, because once you look at stuff, you can say, oh, their, their pictures are not updated. Oh, wow, they haven't put a post out since 2017. Oh, is this still your hours? You're closed every day? You know, you can pull little things that they may not have seen, mainly because they're out there doing all their work, or they just don't look at it all the time. You can give them, I, I always say, I try to give people like three to five easy things that they can fix. By giving them that, it shows that you're the expert in your field. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that we hadn't updated our cover photo since 2017, or I didn't know that we need to add a short description and a long description. They immediately think, wow, this person is the expert. And so then you offer them, hey, I can do an audit where I come in and do more of your stuff, more social media pages, maybe your website, depending on your expertise, you can always add to this. Again, I always say start small. And then you could say, I could do an update for you for X amount of dollars. And you would go in, they would give you rights to their page. You'd make their cover photo for them, go into Canva, create something. You fix their profile picture so it's not half cut off. You um, update their language. Maybe it's Instagram. Maybe you make the highlights for them on Instagram. You can charge for all of that stuff. And so that's what we talk about. Um, I love Canva. Most of you love Canva. Um, people are willing to, to 
um, pay for those designs because they just don't want to do them. And um, I've always thought a really awesome business idea, and I'll tell you guys this and somebody can just run with it, is to create like 30 days of, um, you know, every month, create 30 days of graphics. So when I say 30 days of graphics, I'm not saying 30 graphics. I'm saying, you know, holidays and, and different things, maybe a couple a week is what I'm saying. So I'm not telling you to do 30 days of graphics and then say, hey, I have a package for real estate agents um, for 30 days of graphics here for the month of January, the first realtor in the Mid-Ohio Valley to purchase it. I won't sell it to anyone else. And you go to each different community, you know, where you live and do that or different industries. I always thought that would be a cool idea. I don't think I'm graphically inclined enough, but most of you probably are because um, I always think everyone else's graphics look better um, than the ones that I do for myself, not the ones that are on my page. Those are done by an actual graphics person that definitely has that side of the brain going on. Um, what I'm going to help you support is there's going to be ongoing trainings. Um, I mentioned I have a huge um, contract with the SBDC. And when I say huge, I just mean long term. I want to make sure my language is right there. So I do ongoing trainings with them. And so I have trainings in everything. And so um, my goal is to at least push out a couple of trainings a month to you guys that are going to be recorded. Um, we may do some lives in this group, depending on the questions um, we got. I have another Facebook group that some of you may or may not be a part of, just called Social Media Marketing Made Simple. And I could put it in the chat once we finish up here today. And we got in a really cool discussion on TikTok. And so I can see that happening in these groups and then me going, okay, you know what? We're going to do a live TikTok training next week. Mark your calendars, or I will put out a poll that says, hey, what day and time is good for everyone in the group. Of course, if you miss it, you're working, you got something else going on, um, you can always I'll have the recording and I'll email it to everybody. So I'm hoping to email out a couple of trainings, really interact with this Facebook group. I love Facebook groups. I love that group um, concept. Of course, if something happens, somebody asked me this when I was talking about this, what happens if Facebook closes tomorrow, which, you know, we always run that risk. I have everyone's email. I'll just say, hey, guess what? We're going to move over to this and we're going to have a group here. Um, one of my favorite marketers even has their own app, which I've always wanted my own app along with my own podcast, which I think I might be moving towards this year. So you'll have to stay tuned for that one. And you'll get one-on-one -on -one support from me. So if you have ever been, um, ever, and people tell me this, feel bad about messaging me, feel bad about emailing me a question, you don't have to. If you're in this program, you have access to me pretty much 24-7. Um, you know, within, within re uh, reasoning, um, I may be at the pool and not get back to you immediately, but I'm going to be there to support you. Um, you can always ask questions. You can always run stuff by me. I love this part of um, being in business, supporting other people. You know, you might say, hey, I'm going to put my new, my first proposal out. Will you read over it for me and make sure like I'm not crazy or things aren't too expensive or too low or something like that. I would love to do that for people because I feel like that is entrepreneurship and that is a part of um, really growing in an industry where there is such a need. There is such a need in this industry. And I see it every single day. So my question for you is, are you ready? You know, ready for financial freedom? That is the big part of this. This may seem like a lot of work, um, but, you know, I strive to work about 20 hours a week. And I will tell you, that's not always been the case the entire 13 years. And I'm a big believer in you work hard a little bit in the beginning to have that long-term freedom, right? So you may go, you know what? I have not, I'm not on social media. So my learning curve is I've got to learn all the social media or, you know, I don't really know how to write a proposal or do invoicing or, or maybe I want to create a website and that's not something I know how to do. That's going to take me a little bit of time now, but guess what? Once you get that stuff set up, you usually never have to touch it again, which is probably the most amazing thing to me is how much stuff that I'm able to set up and walk away from. So why, you know, why do I do this? My why is this allows me to pay for dance lessons. It allows me to keep my credit card balance at a zero, pay bills, pay car payment, house payment. You're able to do all that. And if you think about it in terms of each client, okay, this client would pay my house payment. That is amazing to think because I had a hard time thinking that way when I first got away from that every two weeks getting a paycheck, right? You say, okay, I get my paycheck. I got to pay this bills with that paycheck. This way I can say, hey, if this client um, signs the contract and we start working together tomorrow, I'll have my house payment 
made tomorrow, you know? So that's the kind of stuff we have to really think about and get in that mindset that might be a little different than what you're used to in that every two week paycheck. So the big thing is I feel like anyone can do this. I always tell people I am no smarter than anyone else in any room, <laughs> in, in any place. But there's a few things that I do that I make sure that, um, you know, keeps my business running. I follow up with people. I try to be available, you know, as much as they need me. I um, communicate. If I'm doing something, I communicate. Um, and I also automate. So then I don't have to worry about myself forgetting something. You know, when you've got a lot of stuff going on, like we all do, I would probably forget to build people. I know I just, we had a new change in executive director and I thought, oh, that's weird. I think their bill is due. wonder why I haven't heard from them. Cause I have a couple, you know, a couple that I've worked with long enough that I know. And I'm like, oh, I bet I didn't change the email of the new executive director. So she doesn't even know there's a bill. So unfortunately it can't do everything for me. It doesn't get dinged when there's a new executive director being brought into place. There's a couple things I have to hit, but as long as, you know, most of that stuff I can catch in the first month, but now I don't have to worry about that. Put her email address in. It's automatically going to send her a thing saying it's due in so many days. Um, the program I use is called 17 hats. If anyone is interested, I love it. Um, uh, I was trying to think if I, I think it's just 17 hats.com. It's like, I have the app and I just have it saved on my desktop. So I don't ever type it in, but I think that's what it is. 17 hats.com. Cause I was going to say canva.com. I know that one, but I think it's 17 hats, like the number 17, not written out. Um, and so I just do it one time and now it's automated. So whatever the second of every month, this client gets a bill, they have so many days to pay it. It sends them a reminder. Thank you, Brittany. Yes. So it is. I got that correct. I had to think about that for a minute. Cause I do not type that in a lot. Cause I do love the app as well. Like I'll go pick up my um, checks for my PO box. And as I'm sitting in my car, I bring up my app and I hit paid because if I don't then guess what I get distracted I'm picking a kid up I'm dropping them off I'm doing 10 other things I walk in the door I don't get to go directly to my office nine times out of ten somebody needs me or something needs to be done I would forget and then they get an email saying they have it paid and they're going I know I paid so I do it in my car as that's a little trick I bring it out there and I just take the app and say paid end of story, then of course I still have to deposit and all of that. But that way, that is one step taken care of that takes me two seconds from the app on my phone. Um, but I love automation. It reminds people of when things are paid, if it's overdue and you're not, I mean, I love it that people think that I'm actually sending that out. Um, but I do not touch it, but it's all set up. And so that's one thing we're going to talk about is the workflows in 17 hats. So if you go in and read about 17 hats, you might say, okay, this sounds really complicated. I set up the workflows probably seven or eight years ago, and I've barely tweaked them in that long. That's how long they've lasted. Um, I even have a template, um, that I'm going to be, um, sharing in the, in the, um, course that talks about um, how to use that program in order to get reviews on Google and Facebook, therefore getting referrals. Um, so um, that is like a template that I'll just share what I put out there and you just can put in your um, links to if you have a Google um, places, which we're going to talk about, and you have a Facebook page, you can just link them right there. And then it goes out, it goes out with every single invoice I send out. And so um, just like, you know, my hairdresser does the same thing. I give, I gave her a review the first time. I just ignore it the rest of the time, but it's a nice little thing. Thanks. I appreciate you supporting my small business, you know, um, but it does get people to do that. And so most of the time when I, when I send that out, um, I will have that client that first time do a Google review or a Facebook review. And then that's one piece of the puzzle I don't have to ask for later. So if you're ready to get started, I don't know if most of you are on your phone or on your desktop, but if you're on desktop, you can actually um, use the QR code, which we'll also be talking about. Um, I had a huge lengthy discussion about QR codes a few weeks ago, and I um, surveyed my Facebook group and I said, hey, would you want to know about QR codes during the social media marketing um, course? And they were like, uh, yeah. And so QR codes are a huge game changer. I even saw, I was at a breakfast this morning, so it was face to face. It was very very good breakfast. And um, several of the flyers that were on my table had QR codes. And one of the gals beside me said, I just started using QR codes and I'm tracking it to see if it works. And I'm like, how exciting. Like, I just feel like that kind of stuff is fantastic. And so if you want to use the QR code, it will take you directly to get enrolled in the course. So just to let you know what's going on right now, 
to communicate because I'm a communicator. Um, this is what we're what I'm considering the pre-sale. So it kicked off May 1st, really like a soft launch um, on my website, the pre-sale to this course, which will mean that the course will be completed and ready for anyone that buys the pre-sale on June 1st. My goal is anyone here today um, and watching this and the replay and you know puts their email address in and pays for the course, they will get it prior to June 1st, and then it will go on sale um, at a higher price on June 1st to anyone else that did not do the pre-sale. That is my um, goal. And so I'm starting to record it this week. It's very lengthy. It's all written, but it's very lengthy and recorded. If you ever recorded anything before, um, you know the struggle there. So I'm going to get it all recorded and put out there and ready and hopefully have it all to you guys prior to June 1st. So the pre-sale, you will actually get... Um, an outline of what it's going to look very similar to when you get the, the regular course about each module and it's going to have access to the Facebook group. So um, if you purchase it today, you will have immediate access to the Facebook group. So um, I'm probably going to throw some trainings in there. We're going to start chatting. I'm going to have links to all the things I've talked about today, plus more. So some of those third party sites that I use. Um, the schedulers I use, 17 hats, Canva, all of that will be linked there, um, as well as I think if I if I'm lying about this, I will I'll put it in the group, but I think I have my template to my content calendar should bring that up so I can remember everything, but there's tons of resources on there. So you can kind of get a um, jump start on all of this. You know, another thing I'm going to encourage through the Facebook group of those that did the pre-sale is go out there and start thinking about a business name. Maybe it's your name. I kind of wish I just used my name. W social media for, for SEO purposes was probably the smartest move I make. I don't know if Jerry is in here, um, but I used to work with Jerry. We launched the first social media and she helped me think of the name and I cannot thank her enough because it has really, that is a key. That is the SEO. So think about SEO, think about your name. Maybe it's just, you know, Krista Meek, social media manager start putting those pages together. You don't have to publish anything. You can just start working on it. So there's a lot you can do in the next one, two, three-ish, three and a half-ish weeks um, before you get um, full access to um, the um, course. But so just to tell you a little bit more about the course, when you enroll, you'll get a welcome and overview presentation. So that will talk about everything we're going to cover, get kind of all your resources together, help you make kind of a checklist of things that you need to work on. Um, if you've ever worked with me, which I know some of you have, you may have heard me use the word pre-marketing. And we are definitely going to do some pre-marketing before we market our social media manager business. Um, so our pre-marketing um, might entail a website, might entail a landing page, may entail some cool stuff. And what's really nice is you might think, you know, okay, she's saying web page, landing page, those sound expensive. Guess what? Canva to the rescue again. Canva has the ability to make a landing slash website page for free. And um, if you go to my Instagram, which I can go below. I actually have my um, link on my Instagram to the, the kind of the landing page Canva has. And so you can see the capability there and then pay attention to the, um, I left it like this. I was going to track it, but I left it like this just to show you guys the URL. Cause it's like, I forget what it is. Something, something, something dot canva.com. So you don't even need a domain name. So you can really start with a ton of free resources. Um, you'll obviously get an invite to my Facebook group, which you will get, um, there. Oh, that's good to know, Brittany. I am not an Adobe Creative Cloud user, but if you do have it, you can get up to five landing pages, web pages in the portfolio. So that would be great. Another reason to have a web page is have a portfolio page, which we also talk about just using LinkedIn as your portfolio. So that's something too that you can kind of start working on is like, well, if I want to go this direction, LinkedIn is a great place to announce it and see what people think. And I'll tell you what, people are really, um, supportive on LinkedIn. So if you like change it and say, Hey, I'm going to start a social media marketing business. And I'm going to do this. You will get tons of people that just applaud you and support you and be your cheerleaders. And those people are so important. And those, a lot of those people are in here today for me. And, um, there are people to me that I always tell, I always tell the story. There are people that may never use my services because they're just not, you know, that's not their, they're like the financial director of something, you know, they're not, in the 
the business of picking that person, but they tell everybody about me. They have friend, you know, friends in different parts of their lives, kids and sports and um, hobbies and things where they're like, somebody's talking about needing social media. I have somebody, let me give you her name. Then they'll text me and say, Hey, I gave so-and-so your name and number. If they reach out to you, they're super sweet. They, you know, they're really trying hard, you know, they'll, and they are my cheerleaders. And I love them the most because they are always there to support me. And you, you will get that tribe. Once you start putting out really great content and just have that um, enthusiasm of building a community and helping people, you will get that tribe too. And I obviously, I'm going to help you try to help you be that tribe as well. You're going to get a step-by-step guide to get started and keep it going because it's stuff that I've learned over the years that are really important. And then there's bonus information. That's all those trainings. So um, the course kind of just starts out really small. That's always been my philosophy. Um, it's worked for me. Um, and I think for a lot of people that I've dealt with in many different industries, starting small tends to work. Um, but we're going to just talk about Facebook and Instagram within the course. And then I'm going to give you all kinds of bonus trainings. If you're like, you know what, I have a client that wants to do TikTok. Okay, let's, we're going to do a TikTok training or, Hey, what about Pinterest? Have you ever dealt with anyone doing Pinterest? Yep. I have a training in that. Let me, let me send that over to the group. Let me share that in an email. And of course, so, so much more. One of the things, the goals that I'm going to try to do is have a preferred social media manager list um, every day. And I'm not exaggerating. I get an email, a Facebook message, a phone call. I had a phone call yesterday um, from a gal in Beckley, actually. And I'm like, usually phone calls are pretty, if they call me, they need something, they need it bad. So sometimes messages don't, don't work out, but phone calls usually do. And somebody will message me almost daily. Hey, I really need help with this. I'm looking for somebody to do X, Y, Z. And most of them are not looking for a full-time person. And so that's unfortunate and fortunate. Um, honestly, in my area, I could not be making the money I make working full-time as like a marketing director. It just that, that number, that, um, salary is just not here. And, and if I want to live here and I want to raise my daughter here and I want her to go to um, school here, then that's just a reality um, for my family. And that's okay because I have found a way to, um, you know, do this online and, and help all kinds of people um, all across the United States. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that I don't go into an office 40 hours a week. Um, but I know some people do, you know, I respect the people that need the um, stability of that and need the um, insurance and things like that that. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of times they come to me and they need someone part-time or they need somebody just, you know, a few hours a week, or they want someone kind of like me, but I'm at full capacity. And so I'm hoping to have this preferred vendor list that I can kind of just rotate through and say, okay, well, I gave one to Brittany last week. So I'm gonna give one to Tanya this week and Lisa next week and, and go through that list. Um, and then again, finding the best fit for you. Um, and that's what I've instilled in uh, one of the gals that does some work for me is that her and I've talked a lot about, you know, you just want to jump out of the frying pan into the fire just because it's it's bad in the frying pan, you know, because it might be even worse um, someplace else. So we've talked a lot about, um, you know, making sure it's a right fit and it's okay if it's not a right fit. So somebody might say, you know, it just really wasn't a right fit with this person. They're looking for more X, Y, Z because they talk to them a little bit more. They're going to know, then I may be able to refer them to somebody that has that experience. And so that's the key is really finding that perfect match there. So I'm hoping to do that. I'm hoping as I, I grow my program, um, I'm going to have this list that I can go through and, and help those folks and and get more people out there. I'm um, helping people do good digital marketing, good digital marketing work. So today, um, as I finish up today, just a little bit more about the pre-sale. The pre-sale um, is going on through the month um, till it launches officially June 1st. And um, you can get the six module course for $99. I've kind of added it up and I say it's probably over a $1,500 value once you add all of those trainings in. Um, today, you will get the what I call the teaser, um, which has all those links and all that fun stuff, the Facebook group to kind of get you started. And then on June 4th, 
June 1st, or hopefully before, I will be sending an email um, that has all of that. And of course, you know, I'll communicate through the Facebook group to check your email and make sure that communication is going. Hopefully, no, none of those emails will, will end up in junk mail. Um, and then what I want to offer today for anyone that's in here watching the, the replay today, and what's the date? The 4th? May, oh, it's May 4th. Yes. <laughs> I, I saw that. I think I missed a Star Wars fun run today um, going on at the same time. So today only, um, if you are watching the replay today, um, I encourage you um, to purchase today because um, anything purchased today for the pre-sale, I'm gonna give an hour consult for free um, or included in that, which is about a hundred dollar value. So you're getting your six module course for a hundred dollars and um, a free consult, hour consult with me um, that we'll schedule probably via Zoom because most of you are not right in my backyard and we can talk about anything you want or you can show me anything you want and get your feedback on. So um, again, you can use the QR code. I will, um, let's see, the easiest way to pop in and out of here. 